Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Minnie. Minnie the moocher. Minnie, step down here. Let the folks see what you got there. Oh, look out, Minnie. That's the kind of girls we have on the inside. Sixteen of them folks shot them. And now, the one upon whom I depend to send you out from underneath this canvas absolutely and fully satisfied is La Belle Fatima. La Belle Fatima, the feature of fashion. La Belle, watch her, folks. There you are. Just a moment, folks. I'm sorry. The show's going to start right away. You get your ticket to either side here. It costs you the small, infinitesimal sum of a dime, 10 cents. Get your tickets right over here, either side. And hurry, hurry, hurry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting Albert. Albert is tattooed from the tips of his toes to his Adam apple. You will notice right here in front, the Blue Eagle, the symbol of the NRA, proving to you that Albe is the first tattooed man to adopt the code of the tattooed men's profession. Now, if you just turn around, Albe, on the back here, we have a reproduction of that famous painting by Michelangelo, mother and daughter. A little further down, that symbol of friendship, hands across the sea. Around his waist, ladies and gentlemen, he has that dreaded python, a dreaded python, and a little lower down, ladies and gentlemen, an exact replica of that masterpiece, The Dawn. Say, mister, I'd like to see that. You would. On the next platform, ladies and gentlemen. Stop it. Let me down, Jimmy Kane. Now you give me a kiss. I won't. I won't, I tell you. Well, I won't let you down until you do. Oh, Jimmy, you're hurting me. All right, Betty. You've got to hurry. I'll kiss you when you come back. Okay, but believe me, I'll collect interest for waiting. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, big boy? <laughs> and how? Sheriff Carnival is mighty lucky to have an important man like you. You're telling me. But believe me, I'm not going to stick with this third-rate show much longer. Retiring? Sure, to the big time. And now that I'm in love, nothing can stop me. In love, Mr. King? You must tell me all about it sometime. Don't worry, you'll be the first one to know. Hey, Kane, you're on next. Mr. Kane, to you, Mug. Give them all you've got, Jimmy. Say, if I did that, there'd be a riot. You're about to witness the most amazing outside exhibition in the history of the carnival world. Here we come now. Introducing. Introducing Daredevil Jimmy Kane and his beautiful little assistant, Betty Roberts. Dad Devil Jimmy is about to dive from that slender platform 100 feet in the air into this tiny tank of water. Hey, Patty, you better give those dancing girls of yours two weeks' notice, starting today. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like the act? Oh, it isn't that. But business is terrible. I'm closing the show. I didn't get that kiss yet. Oh, yes, you did. I threw it to you. Well, I never got it. Your delivery's too weak. That's your hard luck. Say, you know, my act's the only thing that keeps this show going. Says you. Well, if I don't have a press agent, I gotta blow my own horn, don't I? Jimmy Kane's always right. Come on, get dressed, honey. It's getting late. What time is it? You got my watch. Look and see. Hiya, Patty. Hello, Jimmy. What are you laughing about? Have you heard the news? The boss is going to give us a raise. You must be a mind reader you come so close. He's given us all a two weeks' notice. You mean he's closing the show? 
That's it. He says he can't make the grade. Then we're stranded. Well, not as bad as that. We'll get our railroad fare. Well, it suits me fine. I was going to quit anyhow. I've been wasting my time on this cheap outfit. But what do we do? Now, don't you worry, honey. We're headed for the big time. Real money. And real dressing rooms. What big time? Vaudeville's all washed up. There's always room at the top. Jimmy Kane's world-famous dive won't go begging. They'll be fighting over me when we hit the big town. Well, I'm going to go and spread the glad news. <laughs> well, so long, Paul Revere. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Don't do that. Where's my watch? Oh, I left it on my dressing table. Come on, let's get it. Be careful of that, honey. You and that robe are my only props. So that's all I am, a prop. Oh, you know better than that. I might be able to get along without the robe. Look at that. That shows you where you stand. Kane and Roberts, the old partnership. Partnership? Certainly. From now on, you get 50% of everything. Even me. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I don't do anything for the act, except hold your robe. Any girl can do that. Listen, sweet, I've never told you this before. Ever since I've been doing this 100-foot dive, you've been down there waiting. If I didn't know you were there expecting me to make good, I wouldn't have the nerve, honest. But it's knowing that you're there and hearing you call, OK, big boy, that gives me the courage to do it. Gee, Jimmy, you make me feel awfully important. You are awfully important. Darling, I have to pack. Well, I guess I'd better run over to the office and get the tickets. How's about it, kid? You and me, huh? Can't she cook it? Oh, look at that boy. Look at him. He's all very tough. Any luck today? Oh, yeah. I saw Lou Felt. He thinks he can get us some booking soon. More promises. That's all those agents ever give you. Oh, well, it's been a terrible season. But don't worry. We'll soon get a break. It's been a terrible season ever since we've been married. Oh, don't talk like that, honey. It can't go on forever, and we'll soon... Don't say it again. Don't say it again. Oh, come on, honey. I can't bear to see you cry. Come on, tell me what's the matter. Is it something I've done? You want to know what's the matter? I'll tell you, I'm sick of this never ending struggle. Sick to the heart. What have we got? Nothing. Nothing but a couple of old trunks filled with cheap wardrobe. But Fatty, we pawned the... everything we own. Unless we pay something on our rent, we're going to be thrown out. We'll soon be begging. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I promised you so much. This is all I've given you. But I have tried. You know I've tried, don't you? <laughs> don't be blue, honey. In spite of everything, we've been happy together, haven't we? And we're not licked yet. No, sir, Jimmy Kane's not licked yet. Here. Come on, blow. Go hard. Mm. 
You do love me, don't you? Cross your heart. <laughs> Gee whiz, when you smile at me like that, I feel I can lick my weight in Wildcat. Oh, there's the landlady. Go and do your stuff, big boy. I said Wildcat. <laughs> Why, hello, Patty. How are you, Judy? How are you? Come on in. Who did I have a time finding you? Well, you're just in time for a cup. Look, it's Patty Mellon. Hello, Judy. Yeah. How are you? Fine. How are you? Great. How are things going? Oh, swell. We just got a 40-week booking. You starting soon? Yeah, next week. Well, that's great. I'm putting on a floor show over the Bubble Over Club, and uh, I thought if you kids weren't doing anything, I'd have a job for Betty. Well, that's too bad, but we're all set. Why don't you tell them the truth, Jimmy? You know we haven't got a job. We haven't got anything. We don't even know where our next meal's coming from. Well, you don't you have to... No, we haven't. What is the job, Patty? I'll take it. I'll take anything. Hey, you used to be able to dance and sing. I still can. Well, that's fine, but I can only pay 20 bucks a week. Oh, that sounds like a fortune. And we do two shows every night except Saturday. Then we do three. I'd do ten for that much money. When do we start? Monday. That'll give us four days of rehearsal. Isn't that great, Jimmy? Hello, Molly. I see you have a new floor show. Yes, they've been here a little over a week. Really? I'm a guest, a pair of wings, by a heart with golden strings. I found up a of me, an angel to love me. Then this angel whispered, yes, so I... <laughs> Mr. Hammond. Evening, Louis. You've met a stranger. Yes, I've been away on a yachting trip. Seems as though I've been missing something. <laughs> That's right. You haven't seen our new floor show. I haven't gotten all new numbers while you were away. Hmm, that girl's new. Gee, it's great. I'm headed straight for heaven. You tell oh, you like her, huh? She's rather attractive. Attractive? She's beautiful. Uh, would you like your same table, sir? Uh, this way, please. I can't wait. I've got a day in heaven. Someone's arms hold all the charms of heaven. For love is the past, And if you should ask me, I'll confess my new address is heaven. Heaven, heaven. Well, that's what I call laying in the eye. Betty, you were wonderful. You want to be proud of her? Yeah, sure. Well, you should be. But after this, Betty, only give them two encores. Well, I don't mind working. And you know, it's that old psychology stuff. You know, give them a little, and they'll want more. <laughs> you got it? Come on, girls, there's your new seduction now. Come on, get in line here. Come on, ready now? Pick it up. One, two, pick it up now, girls. Give us a show up there, and there's a pretty hot audience out there. And uh, meet me after the show tonight, will you, uh, Fanny? Not if I can get out of it, Grace, please. It's all so wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to move that off a room this week. Sure. And another thing, I'm going to get your watch out of Hawk and get you some new clothes as soon as I can. That'll be swell. Jimmy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Yes, there is. There's something on your mind. It's nothing. Come on, tell me. Oh, well, I guess you'll hear about it sooner or later. That's this. This article in Variety.
Is that all? Isn't that enough? Well, I can't see that it amounts to very much. Well, I guess you can't see how it makes me feel, having it spread all over the show business that you're keeping me. Oh, Jimmy. Well, you are, and it's gotten to be news. Oh, I know how you feel. Your pride is hurt. But all this, my working and you're not working, it's only temporary. Your big chance will come just as you always said it would. Why shouldn't I help out? We're partners, aren't we? Well, sure, we're partners, but... Oh, come on. Snap out of it, big boy. Oh, okay. You haven't kissed me yet. I tell you, Wynn, this girl has real talent. You wait till you see her. I'm afraid she'll be too old if she waits for me to see her. You wouldn't pass up a good bet, would you? A good bet? Your good bets have been costing me too much money already. I tell you, I've heard this girl do her number every night this week. Now listen, John. Ever since you've been putting money into my shows, you've been using my chorus as a clearinghouse for your women. Every week you come up here with a new find. I know, I know, but this girl has real talent. They've all got talent according to the way you see them. Well, if you don't graph her, somebody else will. That'll be a break. I've already put five of your finds in, and what's happened? Every one of them fired after the first few days. No, 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 John, I'm through. I'll make you a proposition. If you'll come to the Bubble Over Club tonight and watch this girl work, I promise never to bother you again. Well, that's an inducement. It's a bargain. It remains to be seen. I'll let you know later. Goodbye. Oh, all right. So long. What would you do if you had my range? I'd turn the gas on. You know, last week in Philadelphia, the manager wanted to hold us over another week. Yes, sir, but he got an animal act instead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, tell him the and then, of course, we do. Uh, 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 I know just what you can do. Yeah. The question is, how much will you wait for? It? Well, we never work for less than $1,500 a week. Hmm. I'll give you $40. We'll, we'll take, take it. it. All right, show up at the Muck City Inn tomorrow morning for your horses at 9 o'clock. And don't be late. Okay. We'll be late. Right. Hello. Anything doing for me today? For you? Nothing. Well, I'll see you again sometime. What's new? Huh? I think I got a spot for you at last. You have where? Down at Bay City, they need a drill act. Gee, that's swell, Lou. What's the dough? $75 a week for a start. Good, huh? 75 a week? Well, Lou, you know I always got 150 with a carnival. Ah, that was a year ago. But ours is a high-class act. Now, listen, Jimmy, they can get all the high-class acts they want for 50 and less nowadays. Gee, can't you talk them into a little? No, nope, that stops. They wouldn't pay anymore. Well, all right. It's highway robbery. Me risking my neck four times a day for 75 bucks. Oh. I'm ashamed to tell Betty. Why, is she coming with you? Sure. I couldn't do that dive without her. She's the only girl I ever worked with. Well, she's doing pretty good where she is, ain't she? Oh, well, that's only temporary. Patty Mellon got stuck for a girl, and she promised to help him out for a couple of weeks. Then you'll take it? Well... It's robbery, but with things as tough as they All right, are... all right. Then you better hang around. The manager's coming in tonight, and we can settle the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. All right. Well, can I use your phone a minute? Sure. Well, Help I yourself. Want, I want to talk to Betty. Can I go in the other office? <laughs> Married to Betty over a year, and you still want to talk private? Well, you know how it is. <laughs> I should know. Circle, 98432. Good evening. Come this way, please. Well, the dinner was all right. <laughs> you wait till you see this girl. If you don't think she's a knockout, then all I've told you goes for nothing. Hey, 
This is her number now. I'm waiting. Sweetheart, what makes you feel so sad? What can I do to make you Are you convinced? Mm, she's not bad. She's not bad? I'll say she's splendid. She's going to be a sensation. <laughs> Provided she sticks to her singing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back and talk to her. Oh, no, I'll no, call Louis and see if we can go back. Oh, wait a minute, John. Yes, Mr. Hammond? Louis, I have a complaint to make. I am sorry, sir. Is it the service? In a way, yes. I haven't met that girl who sang just now. Oh, mon dear, I've been expecting this. <laughs> He's on to you, John. Oh, I'm surprised at you, Louis. It's not for me I ask, it's for my friend here. He's been after me for days, wanting to meet this young lady. Just been pestering you to death, haven't I? I told Mr. Allen that only through your influence could we possibly hope to meet her. So it's up to you. Very well, sir. I'll see if it can be arranged. Miss Roberts, Mr. Hammond, and Mr. How do Allen. You? This is quite a pleasure, Miss Roberts. How do you do, Miss Roberts? Do you do? Will you excuse me, please? Oh, certainly, Louis. Uh, we enjoyed your performance very much indeed. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Allen is the producer of Highlights of Broadway. Yes. And your singing impressed him so much that he'd like you to join his company. Well, uh, I don't think I could. Think? Oh, you wouldn't have to think long about a contract at 125 a week, would you? Uh, about John. $125 a week? Mm hmm You accept then? Uh, Miss Roberts doesn't have to make up her mind now. Suppose we have her come down to the office in the morning and we can talk it over. Yes, I think that would be better. All right. 11 o'clock then, hmm? I'll be there. Hey, Betty, I got it. Excuse me. Jimmy. I want you to meet Mr. Hammond and Mr. Allen. This is my husband. Hi, Mr. Hammond. Well, well, Mr. Roberts. Kane's the name. Oh, I beg your pardon. Think nothing of it. Mr. Allen, <laughs> how do you do, Mr. Kane? I think we'd better be running along. Oh, don't let me drive you away. Oh, that's all right. We have to go anyhow. Uh, good night, Miss Roberts. Good night. Thank you both. Good night. Hey, Betty, come here. Say, who are those guys? Oh, Jimmy, I've got a surprise. They offered me a job in highlights. Yeah, well, I got a real surprise for you. What is it? I got a contract for our act at Bay City. Oh. Yeah, we open money at 75 bucks a week. Isn't that swell? No more chorus jobs for you. You happy? Well, of course I'm happy. But give me a chance to realize that. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't believe it. That's just the way I feel. We're good for two months at least, and then Lou Felt says he's going to put us in a big time. What do you think of that? Well, it's great for you, Jimmy. For me? Well, what about you, Wes? You're not thinking of staying here, are you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> That's a way to talk. Our worries will soon be over. Gee, isn't it great? Sure, Jimmy, it's great. 
And from now on, I bring home the bacon for Kane and Roberts. You're on next, Miss Roberts. Such a wonderful opportunity. Just think, $125 a week. With both of us working, we'll soon get ahead. Oh, darling, I'm so thrilled. If I could dream. Betty, the, the only thing that worries me is that we'll be separated. Oh, that's all right. You'll have to get another girl in my place, won't you? Yeah, I never thought of that. You won't mind. All you need is someone dressed in white standing down there, isn't it? Yeah. That's all I need. It's somebody dressed in white standing down there. Well, if you come up to John Hammond's expectations, you'll be a star. I hope I don't disappoint, Mr. Hammond. I hope you don't either. How soon can you start rehearsals? Will three o'clock be too late? You see, my husband's leaving town at 2.30. No, three o'clock will be fine. Well, goodbye. Uh, uh, goodbye, Miss um, Can I drive you anywhere? Uh, thank you, no. Well, I hope you're satisfied. So far, so good. I'll never get over the fast one you pulled about our salary. Well, you should worry about that as long as I'm paying the hundred. It's only 25 a week out of the company's money. Well, anyway, I hope this one turns out to be a good investment. <laughs> she should, according to the law of averages. Now remember, John, this is absolutely the last one. Imagine a girl like that being married to a high diver. Oh, we got a whole minute. Remember what I said? About eating? Okay, baby. No eating before you dive. I promise. Lord? And listen, don't let them palookas work you to death. Hurry, darling. Oh, kiss me. Uh. Goodbye, kid. Well, this is a bit of luck. Luck or coincidence? Well, uh, hardly a coincidence. <laughs> you forget that you told me where you'd be about this time. Oh, so I did. I thought perhaps I'd better see that you weren't late for your first rehearsal. I'm never late. My car's just around the corner. Yes, I know how you feel. I certainly had one busy morning. What you do, Gussie? The doorbell and the telephone ain't never stopped once. Who called? Mr. Hammond and Mr. Allen and Mr. Kane called from Bay City. Mr. Kane? Yes, sir. 
Why didn't you call me, Gussie? You told me, miss, not to call you for nobody until 12 o'clock. I didn't mean Mr. Kane. Get him on the phone right away. Yes, sir. Must I call him at the hotel? Yes. Yes, sir. Will you get Mr. Kane at the Sanford Hotel at Bay City? For Miss Roberts? Yes, sir. That's right. Thank you. Oh, you want to save these notices. Lordy, how the critics are still raving about you. I'm so to death. Be sure to save all of them. Yes, sir. They always make nice readings. Hello? What's that? He ain't there. Oh, wait a minute. He ain't there. Just leave word that I called, and I'll call back later. Yes, ma'am. Will you leave word that Miss Roberts called, and she'll call back later? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Say, what, what's the matter with you? Here I'm telling you about a raise, and you look like you got bad news. Maybe I have. Maybe you have. What do you mean? Nothing. What's got into you? Don't you like the girl I gave you to work with? Sure, she's all right. Well, then, sir, what are you so sour about? Maybe it's the heat. You ain't thinking of quitting me, are you? What gave you that idea? Well, I don't know. Your wife I hit on Broadway, and I thought maybe... Did you that... see her? Sure, I went to the show. How did she look? Wonderful. Here's your wife overnight, a star on Broadway, and me, and you're sitting here crying. Oh, well, I've only had two letters from her since I've been down here. He's only heard from her twice a week since he's been down here. <laughs> I'm laughing. Well, what's so funny about that? Believe me, if I hear from my wife twice in two years, I'm worried. Time to go on, Mr. King. I'll be right out. Here, I'll give you a hand. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness a most spectacular feat of courage and daring. That world-famous daredevil, Jimmy Kane, world champion high diver, will attempt a high dive from the apex of that lofty tower into that tiny uh, tank of water defying death. Jimmy Kane, ladies and gentlemen, watch him. I'm telling you, I talked to the manager. What did he say? He said you can take your dive tomorrow. I hope he's right. Ah, forget it. A thing like this could happen to anybody. But it's the first time for me. I never lost my nerve before. You're all upset. Things will be different tomorrow. Sure. Say, how long does it take to phone New York? Well, it shouldn't take more than five minutes. Well, it's been that long since I put the call through. I'll bet there she is now. Hello, hello. I want to speak to Miss Roberts. What? She's not there. Well, this is her husband, Mr. Kane, speaking. Well, I can't just rightly see what time she'll be in. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, she went to a party with Mr. Allen and Mr. Hammond. Yes, yeah, sir. Lordy, lordy, don't know how before I could tell him where to call her. Give me Parkway 3121. Thank you. Hello? Yes, Gussie. Well, I'm glad you called. I'll call him right away. Hello, long distance, please. She wasn't there, huh? No. Well... You know, she's a very busy girl nowadays. 
Yeah. Out with that Hammond guy again. Well, that's the way the show business goes. I suppose so. Now listen, Jimmy. I know Betty so good like I know you. And you can believe me, she's 100% for you. Yeah? Well, let's forget about it. That's the idea. A good night's rest will fix you up. Well, I must be leaving. I'm driving to New York tonight. Oh, say, maybe I can send you up some sandwiches or cigarettes. No, no thanks, Lou. All right, kid. I'll see you tomorrow. So long. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Kane. Certainly keeping Betty on the run. Are you complaining? You want publicity, don't you? Yes. Oh, and don't forget Sunday. What is there for Sunday? Now, don't tell me you've forgotten the invitation from Mrs. Mandel Parker to spend the day in her yacht. But I'm sorry. But you, you don't want to make me go alone, do you? My dear, you really should go. Your picture with Mrs. Mandel Parker will look so nice in the paper. Dorothy's right. I really think you should accept Betty. You know, Mrs. Mandel Parker is everything in society. But I can't. I'm spending the day with my husband. Excuse me, miss, but there's a Mr. Feld, and he wishes to see you right away. Mr. Feld? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, please. And don't forget, I've made my own plans for Sunday. Is Jimmy here? Why, no, Lou. You ain't seen him today? No, I haven't. What's happened? <laughs> That's what we don't know. The management phoned me that he's disappeared. Disappeared? No. Something dreadful's happened. Oh, no, no, it's all right. He's all right. But Jimmy's too good a trooper to simply walk out on them. I was thinking that's just what he did. Oh, no, Lou. I know Jimmy. He'd never do a thing like that. We must do everything we can to find him. Do you understand what I want? It's been almost a week since my husband disappeared, and the police have been unable to locate him. Yes, Miss Roberts. A private detective agency like ours can perhaps be more thorough than the police in such cases. You will start immediately, then? Yes. Heaven's sakes, where have you been? Oh, I've just been wandering around. What's the matter? Have you gone crazy? Not quite. Betty is worried sick. She's got policemen and detectives looking for you everywhere. Have you seen Betty? Seen her? She's been after me day and night. Wait, I'll call her up. Now, wait a minute. Can I get my job back? Sure you can. I won't let you down this time. That's the way to talk. Well, all right. If I can, if I can get to do my dive again, then I'm ready to see Betty. I guess I'd better get a manicure though and get some decent clothes before I go up to sea. Sure, see. we'll stop at my hotel uptown. I'll have you fixed up. All right, Lou. You understand everything, Gussie? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have lunch right away. That'll be easy, Miss. And hot biscuits too. Leave everything to me. Everything will be all right. He ought to be here any minute. How do I look? Oh, I'm so excited. Just fine, Missy. But I sure been worried about you all this week. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, oh, I'm... You might stop crying and ask a guy in. I'm not crying. Come in, big boy. Honey, I'm, I'm certainly glad for your success. It wouldn't mean a thing without you, Jimmy. I've missed you. I was so frightened. And I've missed you. See, when I go back to that... Go back? Oh, I'm never, never going to let you out of my sight again. With the money I'm earning, we can do all the things we ever planned or dreamed about. Oh, no, honey, I couldn't let you... Oh. Have you forgotten about our partnership, Kane and Robert? Oh, Jimmy, you mean everything to me. Oh, oh. Lordy me, they're stone cold.
Betty ought to be on in a minute now. Yes. By the way, how are you getting along with her since her husband came back? Husband or no husband, my status remains the same. What's the matter? Can't you make any headway? No, I haven't given up hope yet. John, you're a little hard to hit this time, aren't you? Frankly, I am. If she'd have me, I'd marry her. Well, 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 I had no idea it was as serious as that. You certainly get your affairs complicated. The ones you can have, you don't want, and the... That's well, right. <laughs> sure to be on now. Come on, let's listen to her. All right. And against the advice of my associates, I engaged her. And in one short month, she has become the toast of Broadway. <laughs> to Betty Roberts. You're magnificent tonight. You think so? I know so. Success becomes you. Thank you. Do you know Miss Roberts? Yes, I do. They say she's married. Is that her husband with her? You were very quiet this evening. What was the matter? Nothing. Didn't you have a good time? Yes, I had a good time. Well, you'd never know it by your actions. Well, after all, it was your party. They were all strangers to me. You'll get used to that feeling, darling. Those are the people we see all the time. Yeah? Well, that'll be just dandy. I told you Lou wanted me to go back to Bay City. And I told you that's out. But Betty, can't you see that... No, the... I can't see anything. don't you? Of course. Sometimes, lately, I've wondered. <laughs> Gosh, I never get a chance to talk to you anymore. What with after-theater parties and luncheons and dinners. What makes you so restless? Nothing. Nothing from you always means something. Come on, tell me what it is. Well, maybe I do have something on my mind. I hope it isn't about you going back to work. No, not that. I don't know how to begin. 
Why, Jimmy, it sounds as though it's going to be something dreadful. Well, Betty, it's about you and Hammond. About me and John Hammond? You've been with him an awful lot. But surely you don't... I don't think anything... But, but... I wouldn't be where I am if it hadn't been for John. Well, of course not. But, honey, if you ever stopped loving me, you'd tell me, wouldn't you? Oh, you're such a foolish boy. How could I ever stop loving you? No, I'm still waiting for you to have dinner with me. But I have, John, many times. Yes, but not alone. How about the Bubble Over Club next Wednesday night, hmm? Why, Jimmy, you're just in time. Oh, well, this is a surprise. How have you been? Fine, thanks. Come on in, darling, and meet the rest of the people. Oh, by the way, you are just in time at that. I shouldn't tell your wife this, but she has a big surprise coming on Wednesday night. A surprise? Yes. Tell me, John, please. Don't keep me in suspense. Well, Alan is giving his entire company a party at the Bubble Over Club on Wednesday, and you are to be the guest of honor. Next Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Oh, how simply marvelous. You know what day that is, darling? Why, yes, it's your birthday. Ah, that's good. All the more reason to celebrate. Now, don't forget, if Alan asks you, you don't know anything about it. It's a surprise party. I promise. Hello, Wendt. Now what? Something serious. You're giving a party for the Highlights Company. I I'm giving a what? You're giving a party at the Bubble Over Club next Wednesday night. Oh, am I invited? Now, listen a minute and I'll explain. You have all my attention. Well, I got into a jam at Betty's last night. That sounds familiar. I wanted to take her out to dinner alone. Friend husband walked in, and before I got through, I had you giving a party with her as guest of honor. Well, I'll say you took an easy way out. Oh, just an example of my quick thinking. Now, you listen to me, John. If you think for one minute now, that I'm going... get excited. It's all right. I'm giving the party. All you have to do is send out the invitations. Well, that's something. Considering everything, it turned out very well. Next Wednesday's her birthday. I didn't know that before. And a producer giving a big party in honor of his newest star is convincing even to a husband. I see. And I'm supposed to uh, send her a present, eh? Hey, that's an idea. I'm giving her a remembrance, and it can be sent in your name. John, why don't you follow my example? I never get involved with women. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, Wynne. Follow your example. Uh, goodbye, John. <laughs> How much is this one? That is $150. Oh. Well, uh, I guess you wouldn't have anything for about 15 would you? I have just what you're looking for here. Yeah, that's all right. I'll take that. Oh, Jimmy, look. Look at my lovely present. Isn't it gorgeous? It's for Mr. Allen and the company. Well, you don't seem at all pleased. Why, of course I am. That's great. It must have cost an awful lot of money. Fifty diamonds. I counted them. That's a lot of diamonds. Mr. Kane, haven't you anything for my birthday? Not even a kiss? Sure. I always have a kiss for Mrs. Kane. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I don't know how I'm ever going to sing tonight. It's a great present, all right. Nothing could have pleased me more. Remember how I always wanted a diamond wristwatch? Yeah, I remember. I'm glad you dressed for the party. You wait here until I get back, and we'll go over to the club together. All right. Two minutes, Miss Roberts. All right. Wait for me, dear.
highlights last night. That Betty Roberts is some classy dame. Mm, she sure is. Where's Rob Allen pick the winner? You remember, don't you? She used to be with the floor show at the Bubble Over Club. Any truth in the gossip you hear about her? Any truth? Hey, I guess you don't know this guy, Hammer. But what he goes after, he usually gets. She's married, isn't she? Yeah, and some poor staff she has to support. <laughs> Backstage husband. Oh, you can't blame him. He's got it pretty soft, if you ask me. Hey, Herman. Yes, sir. What do I owe you? Dollar and a half. Are you married? Yes, sir. My boy, I got the sweetest little wife in the world. Give her that. Tell her some sap give it to you. I've been waiting for a chance to speak to you alone. Now you have it. <laughs> Betty, I'm mad about you. Oh, please. Oh, but I am. You must have seen it. Don't you care a little for me? Why, of course I like you, John. But I love my husband. But you can't love him. Don't you see? He's hardly ever with you. You've grown away from him. You mustn't say such things. Jimmy means everything in the world to me. I think of you only as a friend. I'm sorry. I like you, John. Let's not spoil our friendship. Then, for friendship's sake, will you do one little thing? What, John? Jimmy, where have you been? I'd like to speak to my wife alone. Certainly. You'll excuse me? I suppose you're still going to try and tell me there's nothing between you and that John Hammond. Of course there's nothing between us. Expect me to believe that? Please, you must understand, Jimmy. Try to. I'm just beginning to understand you. I've been a sap. You mustn't say that. Please. You know I love you. Uh, don't make me laugh. All right, then. It's true. Everything you accuse me of is true. It's true? Yes. I'm crazy about him. Get out! Get out! I never want to see you again. Why make yourself any more objectionable, Kane? from Allen and the company. Let him go. Don't worry. I'll see you home. Show closes, you'll need a good long rest. Yes, I'll need a rest. I'm taking a house in Bermuda. Nice and quiet down there. You'll like it. Oh, but I couldn't. I know what you're going to say, but it's all perfectly proper. Alan and several other people are coming down. That would be nice. 
That hat becomes you. And that's really a charming dress. Thank you. If only you had a smile to go with it. <laughs> that's better. Shall we go? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, you No what? Oh, uh, it's on the dressing table. I'll get it. You never did tell me whether you really liked it. Yes, I did, John. Everything about it? Why, of course. I wasn't quite sure how you'd take the inscription. Inscription? Oh, I, I suppose I shouldn't have aroused your curiosity about it. But never mind now. I'll explain on the way to the club. Now I see it all. I see why he left me. Betty, that was the only way I had of showing my esteem for you. Can't you see what you've done? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize. No, you didn't. I love Jimmy. What are you doing with that outfit on? I'm going to do my fire dive. Well, you haven't done that in a long time. I know it. Okay. There's a great crowd out there, Jimmy. Yeah? That's fine. I always like a big audience. Yeah, and it didn't hurt you a bit to miss that last time. <laughs> they seem to think you can do it. Well, don't you worry. I can do it all right. Oh, of course you can. But you know how the public is. Always expecting a big thrill. Yeah? All right. I'll give him a thrill I'll never forget. There he is again, ladies and gentlemen. This time back again, that daredevil Jimmy Kane. More spectacular, more stupendous than ever. For this time, imagine, ladies and gentlemen, that death-defying daredevil will dive after converting himself into a blazing human torch from the top of that hundred-foot ladder, head foremost into a blazing cauldron of fire. Jimmy Kane, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Kane. Certainly went over pretty big, didn't we, baby? Yes, Jimmy. Pretty big. You bet it's the old partnership that does it. Kane and Roberts. We're headed for the big time now. For better or for worse? Yeah. Better for me and worse for you. Mm -hmm. 